Hello Mavericks, this is Imri and welcome to today's Currency Recap. It is May 16th. All right, so today, as always, we'll be doing a review of the trading day. We'll be going through some meaningful news from the day, taking a look at the broader equity markets and doing some commodity analysis as well. We're then going to look at the major indices like the S&P 500, examine our proprietary currency baskets, and take a look at any major news reports to close out the week. And then we're going to wrap things up by taking a look at a few trading setups and opportunities in the currency markets. Let's get into it. In this currency recap, we'll be using some advanced technical analysis. We believe technical analysis is the fundamental skill for every profitable Forex and crypto trader. Maverick Currencies is currently hiring serious technical traders for a trader position. Traders will trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits generated. If you are a technical trader with a technically based trading system, we want to meet you. So please click the application link in the description below this video. Now let's break down today's market action. Starting things off with some broader market analysis. So uh, we'll be taking a look at the news of the day. Although unemployment claims came in, uh, they were right around what was expected. It wasn't a market shifting event. So the market does seem to be continued to, to, to be betting on lower rates coming sooner rather than later. And it was generally a quiet day today. The Dow briefly touched 40,000 and then traded back down. Uh, so we can see the S&P down slightly on the day. Same with crypto, same with gold, and oil rebounded a little bit. Taking a look at our currencies, we can see that the biggest losers on the day were the yen and the Swiss franc, where uh, whereas our biggest winners were the US dollar, the New Zealand dollar, uh, and the Canadian dollar. So some outperformance there by the Kiwi dollar for sure, whereas the Aussie was flat, Euro more or less flat, and same with the pound. Taking a look at crypto, we can see that Bitcoin Cash was the biggest loser today out of the major market cap cryptos we follow, followed by Ethereum and Bitcoin. Litecoin more or less flat on the day. Now taking a look at our market outlook, uh, we're back to a plus three. It's a very slight positive slope on that moving average, but we're above both moving averages. And as I just said, the slope is, is just barely positive. If I wanted to, to pick nits, I, I'd give this like a plus 2.75. Uh, and if we take a look at this chart of the S&P 500, you can see that you know we had a, uh, a very uneventful day today. We traded a little bit higher, traded a little bit lower, rebounded a little bit, closing the day um, almost unchanged, down slightly. So we'll have to see what tomorrow brings, but it was a pretty quiet news day. And uh, as you can see from the economic calendar, tomorrow is going to be a very quiet news day as well. So I actually think tomorrow is a good day to take off for traders. Just take the day off, enjoy the weekend. And then uh, on, on Monday, we're going to have a bank holiday in Europe and in Canada as well. So taking a look now at some currency analysis. So looking at our velocity score here, you can see that uh, we've got the North American currencies and the Euro smack dab in the middle. We've got the pound, the Aussie and the Kiwi on the positive side of the velocity spectrum. And then on the negative side, we, we have the Swissy and the Japanese yen. Uh, we're going to jump over to trading view right now to take a look at our currency baskets to see if there's anything going on my internet has been a little bit uh slower on the slow side today so there might be a delay here as i'm jumping between charts first up we have the japanese yen currency basket uh, we did spike higher earlier in in the day and then we just had a sharp downside reversal so the yen's looking very vulnerable right now uh, it remains to be seen whether we're going to make a new low still below that monday to, uh, april 29th low but I would say the odds favor uh, that to be the case. Taking a look at the US dollar next, uh, bear with me traders, there's that delay I was talking about. We did break below this trend line, but there hasn't been much follow through yet. So we have to see whether we're gonna get some consolidation below this trend line that might lead to a break lower, or if we're just gonna pop right back up above that trend line, in which case we can call this a false breakdown. And then next up we have the Swissy. So the Swiss franc was uh, certainly a weaker currency today. You can see we're kind of low basing here in this region of support. Uh, the only problem is this low from the end of September of 2023. So until we can break below this purple shaded area, you know, it's going to be tough for me to really go with some uh, bearish Swissy momentum here. And as you can see, we're below that 50 period daily moving average. So I think the Swissy is best left alone until we have a good technical break, either below support or above that moving average. 
Um, and then next up, we're going to look at the euro. Euro was very, very quiet today, virtually unchanged. And we're just chopping around in this longstanding resistance area. Uh, so volatility in the euro has been kind of all over the place and very similar to the Swissy stuck between a trend line and resistance. We have to wait and see which way the euro is going to break before it becomes tradable once again. And then next up, we have the Great British Pound. Uh, so the British Pound, you know, I, I, again, kind of stuck here. Uh, I'm still looking for a downside move, which, you know, after uh, after this sharp rebound from the lows on May 9th might be less likely. But either way, we're still stuck in this range. So given as we're trading towards the upper end of the range, I'd say downside bets on the pound become increasingly likely. And of course, that range, just like how in the euro and the Swissy, uh, will break eventually. Next up, we have the Canadian dollar, very similar price action to the U.S. dollar. We've broken below this trend line and there's just been no follow through. So we have to see whether we're going to get some consolidation followed by another sharper move lower or if we're going to jump back above that trend line and continue chopping around. And then next up we have the Australian dollar. So the Aussie dollar has actually had uh, caught a bit of a, a, a tailwind. Uh, as of late, and we've now reached the target that I called out, which is that extreme from June 16th. Now I would move to the sidelines as far as the Aussie dollar is concerned and just wait to see whether we're going to reverse from this area of resistance or if we're going to clear it, in which case I'd look for a pullback or high base before looking to trade further higher. And then next up and finally, we have the Kiwi dollar, the New Zealand dollar. So similar to the Aussie dollar, the New Zealand dollars had a bit of a tailwind here. Um, and we're now entering into some technical resistance. So I also think that the Kiwi dollar has a bit more room to the upside before we reach that resistance. So any base or, or pullback uh, could be a good reason to pull the trigger to buy the Kiwi dollar. Just have to wait for that technical setup. But like I said, tomorrow probably best to take off. There's just no impactful economic news on the calendar. So it's unlikely we're going to see much currency volatility. All right, Mavericks, that wraps things up. So in conclusion, as always, continue to play relative strength and weakness, pay attention to proper position sizing, and as always, always follow your trading plan to the letter. That's it for me. Bye for now. I'll see you guys next week when I'll be in Mexico City. Bye for now.